So what you guys do is facilitate private market transactions. Yeah. Looking at this situation right now, there is an argument that 2019 is the window and then it slams shut. What do you make of that argument? Well, it's too early to say that. I mean, it can continue. I mean, we thought the bull market was over, over a long time back and just it keeps on going. So it's very difficult to say that. But I think these companies are ready. Um, they have come off age, all these on-demand services. I mean, Uber is uh, nine years old, uh, uh, Lyft is seven, and Postmates about six. So I think they're about right, uh, right time to go public. So uh, I don't say, think so. Well, there is a momentum right now, and it, they're the right time to cash in on this momentum. Can you talk to me a little bit about valuations? I understand the banks involved, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, they want to put, make sure their client goes public, so they offer them a massive valuation. It's like the teaser, yes. go public, you can achieve this. Yes. What is achievable? Well, you know, that number, 120 billion, you can get there. And right now, they're expected to do 11 billion, Uber is, for instance. Uh, they're supposed to do 11 billion in revenues. I mean, we have seen historically, the IPOs have traded at 8.5 times uh, trailing revenues. So even if you do that, that's about 88 billion. Then layer on their partnerships, which is about 20 billion. And then layer on Uber Eats, you can get another uh, 15, 20 billion. So you can get there by those numbers, but we have to see the execution. They need to continue on this uh, path. And uh, the regula regulations uh, need to be controlled. Look, I think what's stunning about this is the previous rounds of funding for the likes of Uber are nowhere near the proposed valuation of $120 billion. And we're talking about previous rounds that took place months ago, not years ago. That's exactly what I'm wondering in reading our coverage of this and seeing what is it about uh, Uber's valuation that should be going up in the past six to nine months as an improvement in the fundamentals because we've been talking about P's peaking late last year and rolling over. So I'm wondering why uh, this company and some startups seem to be immune to that trend or if it's just you know, the bank teaser. Santosh, it's really interesting because there's been a big debate over the last several years about the valuations achieved in private markets and how they might be unrealistic to achieve them in public markets, but Uber actually looks like an example where that argument falls dead on arrival. Yeah, uh, see, um, there's a big difference. In the past, companies became public or came to public markets much earlier. Now they are fully baked in, they're very well, well developed. So I think you can make a case that the business model is fully developed. So when they come in, the value is there. So uh, you, we don't have to uh, not trust the valuation. It's pretty good at this point. Aren't we talking about a very sort of infantile business model still though? ride sharing, ride hailing. It's not that old. Right. Um, Uber is being valued not on its ride, ride hailing business, its core, the, uh, the early business. It's more than that. They're going beyond that. Uh, they're going to be in, uh, like I said, delivery business. They're going to have a whole range of other ancillary services. So I think uh, you have to value people are betting on the future where the whole transportation fabric is being disrupted. So these guys are gonna take big share out of that. So I think that's where the market is, that's where the bet is. It's not on just the small ride hailing market. So this makes a lot of sense to have this optimism reflected in the equity. Mm -hmm. um, I'm struggling to make sense of why it might be reflected in the debt, Kathleen. Uber coming to the market, big order book, upsides in the offering, how? Reach for yield, there is demand and it's at the price that investors are looking for on the fixed income side. It's not rational, it, it's not good value, and it seems that the money that's being raised is priced for perfection. I came into the city yesterday, all around Penn Station, there are all these barriers up now. I can't get an Uber, I feel like I'm breaking the law in order to hail a ride. So if they're tr branching out and doing all these things at this time, makes absolutely no sense to me. So 7.5% coupon on a five-year note. On an eight-year note, I think they'll give you 8%. Um, my question essentially is, what does Uber look like in eight years, Santosh? And if I'm a debt investor, does 8% yield really compensate me for the likelihood that it may or may not be around? Yeah, it's going to be a lot bigger. Uh, it's going to be more than just the ride-hailing business. So uh, you're going to see much more than what it is, like, uh, like I said earlier. We, we'll see where it goes. Uh, it may be part of a bigger company, or they may acquire other companies, but it's not going to be just this. So you'll see a whole different profile. Uh, you have to remember, the market share, the market opportunity is huge. It's tr $2 trillion if you see the whole transportation fabric out there so I think they can disrupt that in one way or the other and they want to control the entire till the last mile so I think they have a good runway ahead of them and they can uh, really capture that Kathleen I completely disagree it's just not the right time they're unproven do they have the skills to branch out in new areas they're offering credit cards from what I understand now this is just uh, 
it's it's the sign of a top, if you ask me. It, and you're 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 extrapolating future growth based on an unknown. It's very so, interesting, Santos, to look at this from a debt and equity perspective. From an equity perspective, there is the argument that when Uber comes to market, finally, that's when the top is in. Mm -hmm. Well, not really. I think uh, you still have to see the untapped market ahead and you have to bet on the future. And that's what uh, private market, private companies are. You have to really bet on the potential as opposed to what they're doing right now. And that's where the value is. And if you're, if you're just going to wait for the full potential to come in, it's going to be too late. So you have to get in and bet on the future.